rappers and music producers. It's Curtis King at CurtisKingBeats.com asking the question, are you using social media or is social media using you? Let's talk about it. That was a drug reference. As a rapper and or music producer, we know that the Internet is very important to our business campaign, our online campaign, building our fan bases, building possible people that will invest in the products that we are to create. Whether it's music, whether it's beats, whether it's songs, whether it's whatever that you're into, we know how important social media is. However, we also know that especially with more research that has come on within the last few years, social media is not always the most positive thing, right? Some people have the philosophy that it is what you make it. I, I tend to go off of the philosophy of the great philosopher Diamond from a movie called Players Club. Make the money, don't let it make you. Now, she wasn't talking about social media. She was talking about money and stripping. <laughs> but I'm talking about social media in the same context. Are you using social media or is social media using you? Now, as you start to map out your plans it's funny because when i was reading through the comments i commend so many of you that were leaving comments on that goal setting video because i know that it comes from a very genuine place when you say look i need to get this many subscribers i need to get this many likes i need to get i know it comes from a great place and i certainly am one that has been a part of that as well especially when you think about wanting to get the hundred thousand subscribers however there's a thin line between using this drug like social media and i keep calling it a drug specifically because i want you to get that into your brain this is a drug in the same way that certain drugs spike dopamine because of this gratification this instant gratification of likes this instant gratification of comments or this perceived love. It's the same sort of dopamine that spikes off when you're actually doing drugs. It's the same stuff that's spiking off when you're looking at your Instagram and you're like, oh, this got a lot more likes than usual. I'm popping. Oh man, so-and-so followed me. Damn, am I really that tight? Like it's dopamine spiking fam. You get excited. That's why you keep going back to that drug. Mm. Going back to the philosophy of using social media and not letting it use you, I'll tell you this. Many of you left comments on the goal setting video that said, I want to get this popping. I want to get this thing going. And I feel you. However, us as rappers and music producers, we tread a very thin line between operating social media for the purpose of business and operating it for the, the, the purpose of pleasure. And you know I'm telling the truth when you when I say that. How I know I'm telling the truth because I know that I'm talking about myself somehow, some way within the context of this up until the end of last year. I was convinced in my mind that I had to be on social media. At least I, I questioned that idea that I had to be on social media to be successful. And to a certain degree, there was some truth to that. However, I didn't have to be on my timeline looking at people's lives and looking at their updates and not saying that I wasn't, in yeah, I am saying I wasn't interested, but seeing all these updates from people that I was just like, I really don't have, I don't know who this is and I don't really care that your cat grew some extra whiskers this month. That's tight. Um, but that doesn't apply to anything that I'm doing in life. And you find yourself going in a rabbit hole, especially when you go to that drug called the Explore page on Instagram. Now I'm speaking specifically to Instagram because that happens to be my drug of choice, but it applies to Twitter. It applies to even to a certain degree YouTube. How many times have you came looking for one video? Like I've been looking for videos about, you know, uh, your workstation ergonomics and making sure that your monitor's at the right height. And then I end up watching videos about these analysts talking about how the Lakers this year have a chance of doing something special. And then the other one saying, oh, no, they ain't got no chance of doing special, but you got to watch the next video to know why they ain't doing nothing special. You end up going down that rabbit hole. We've all been down it some shape or form. We've all been down it. And so last year I started to question the idea. Do I have to be on social media as a participant, a constant participant in order to be successful? And the idea both scared me. But then the idea both inspired me to do something different because I didn't like the feeling that I had of spending hours and hours and hours of time on social media. You know, they with one of the new Apple updates on the iPhones, one of the things that they give you is your screen time. It's not a good feeling to look at the end of the day and say six hours of my day, six hours of my day. If you do six hours a day for seven days, it's 42 hours, 42 hours of time that you spent scrolling down your phone convincing yourself that this is business, 
It's not always business. 30% of the time business. We convince ourselves it's business. But when we get into this rabbit hole of feeling like everything that we're doing is business related, we'll never leave. In all actuality, it's not just your business, it's the business of Instagram, it's the business of Facebook, it's the business of YouTube. Right. Because what's happening while you're going and you're looking down the timeline, you're seeing ads and you're not only seeing ads for just stuff that you may or may not be interested in. You're seeing ads for things that you might have talked about and said out loud, since we know that obviously it's an obvious thing now that these social medias listen to conversations or listen for certain keywords and then throw ads in front of you with the same exact things that you were talking about. That's no mystery. You know, when you think about the algorithm, they're naturally designed to keep you there. And when you start to think about that, you start to realize, man, am I the owner of the sucker? Am I the one that is the sucker, right? Am I the one that is actually the head of the social media and, and building business or is social media using me as part of their business? Rewinding back what I was talking about towards the end of the year, I challenged myself on it and I stopped going on social media little by little. I just chose one social media to just get rid of. I said, you know what? I don't need to be on Facebook, at least the personal Facebook. I don't need to be on there for any reason. I wanted to test that out and see what my business and see what would happen with my business. Now, keep in mind, I'm talking about my business, not everybody's business, right? Don't go deleting stuff because Curtis said it. I'm just saying I deleted it and didn't notice a change. I didn't notice a decrease. I actually saw an increase. So then I said, OK, well, let me get this screen time down for my cell phone because most of my screen time is social media. Well, let's only go on Instagram at specific times of the day. Let's go on at 11 a.m., 2 p.m., maybe even 5 p.m., and then 8 p.m. or 10 p.m. So then I had to say, not only do I go on on these specific times, I need to cut my times down to at least 10 to 15 minutes, no more than 10 to 15 minutes, right? So if you're talking about 11 a.m., 10 minutes, you're talking about 2 p.m., 10 minutes, 20 minutes, you're talking about uh, 5 p.m., that's 30 minutes. It sounds so doable, right? And it wasn't the, I gotta be honest with you, it wasn't the easiest thing to do, but once I did it, what I noticed is that I had all of this time that didn't exist before. Now, obviously, you're going to have to morph that around your schedules. I work full time doing music. I work full time as a producer and, and, and as a YouTuber. So my schedule is a bit different. So I'm being sensitive to the fact that I know some of you work at nine to five. Some of you got school. Some of you got kids. I got a son. It's a challenge to get that discipline in the right place, but it's not impossible. I want you to look at social media in its proper context. I want you to look at it and say, I need to be in control of this experience called social media. I need not to let this control me. If I can control myself for at least just starting this month, let's just start with this month. If I can at least control myself this month, and really limited, delete one of my social medias. If I can focus in on one, limit the amount of time that I have on it, only go on it on specific times of the day, I bet that you'll be a lot more purposeful about what you're doing on there. I myself, I know it's gonna sound really bad and maybe even partly conceited to some people, I don't check my timeline anymore. There's a lot of stuff there that, that can either trigger some negative emotions, they can trigger some distractions, and really that's the biggest problem. When I look at a lot of the goals that you guys shared, the biggest problem seems to be I wanna cut something. It's not, I want to build something, it's I want to cut something, I wanna do less of something, I wanna have less distractions. There's nothing wrong with that. But what that tells you is that there's a lack of focus. Can you operate your business without social media? Depending on what your business is, most times the question is no. But can you control what you do and how long you spend on it? Absolutely, yes you can. This is what I'm challenging you to do. So as you're thinking about your social media campaign and you're excited about getting your numbers up, getting your followers up, treat it as the drug that it is. Right. You are a distributor of content and entertainment. You're not a user. Don't go around here being a user of it and then realize, damn, January was just I feel like it was just yesterday. Now, here it is August and I have not accomplished not even 70 percent of the things I said I would. If we're going to get this thing done, we got to pace ourselves, but we got to make sure that we're in control of the time that is around that pace. In this life, you will not be full of life until you decide to live life to its fullest. Curtis King of CurtisKingBeats.com. Please subscribe to the channel below, Curtis King, CurtisKingBeats.com.